Greetings, and welcome to this special tutorial that is part of the AES Fall Online 2021 convention. For this tutorial, we will be talking about the Journal of the Audio Engineering Society, and specifically what it takes to become an author and participate in publishing in the journal. My name is Rob Maher. I'm a member of the Publications Policy Committee for AES, and I'll be introducing the tutorial today. We will also be joined by Josh Rice, who is the chair of the Publications Policy Committee and also the president-elect of our society, Visa Velamecki, who is the editor-in-chief of the journal, and Bozina Kostek, who is also on the Publications Policy Committee and the former editor-in-chief of the Journal of the Audio Engineering Society. We're glad you're here. The Audio Engineering Society moves forward by having new ideas, innovations, and new technical results presented for all of us to share. The Journal of the Audio Engineering Society is intended as a conduit for that information to reach a large audience. The Audio Engineering Society Journal has a great audience because it includes actual practitioners who are working in the field, people who are enthusiasts about the audio field and the techniques that we all learn and, uh, and use, companies that are developing this technology and making equipment and uh, developing products, and then of course academic scholars who are people who study this information and uh, prepare scholarly articles. All of these people are in the audience for the journal. Uh, writing a paper and publishing new results in the Audio Engineering Society journal identifies you as an expert in the specialty field in which you are working. This can be very important for career advancement and also it's a great way to get some professional satisfaction and recognition for the hard work that you do. Uh, the AES has many opportunities for people to share work in the audio engineering field. There are local sections around the world that are often looking for presenters and people who can give a, a technical demonstration or perhaps a technical tour. That's a very good way to get started in uh, sharing information about what you're doing in the audio field. The AES conventions taking place uh, a couple times a year have technical sessions like this one where we have uh, information conveyed that usually is of uh, very current and late breaking uh, topics that we can uh, present very quickly and have a lot of interaction. AES conferences also take place from time to time and they allow more in-depth coverage of specialty areas such as audio gaming, immersive audio, or maybe automotive audio. So those uh, take place as well. Then the AES Journal is the way in which the Society provides fully reviewed articles of archival quality, meaning articles that will have importance, we believe, not only today but into the future and need to be maintained and curated in a, in a very uh, professional manner. And that's where the AES Journal comes in. A manuscript that's suitable for publication in the journal needs to be very new and innovative and very uh, a well written uh, type of publication. Uh, a publication for the journal faces many layers of scrutiny. Uh, there will be what is called peer review, meaning experts in the field will read the manuscript and uh, criticize it and, and add comments and suggestions and, and, uh, and so forth. Uh, in fact, many manuscripts that go to the journal might initially be rejected because they don't meet some of the requirements and standards that you'll hear about today in the tutorial. And uh, even the best articles that are submitted usually require some revision before they are published. So the review process reveals some areas that could be improved. And as an author, you get a lot of benefit out of having that very careful scrutiny of your article. And that ensures that we have very high quality in the journal. Now let's hear a little bit more about why you might want to publish in the journal, how you go about doing it, and what some of the special opportunities may be. So our first uh, contributor in the tutorial uh, will be Josh Rice. Okay, thanks Rob and hello everyone. Today I'm going to spend about 10 minutes uh, giving you an author's perspective on why it may be a good idea to submit to the Journal of the Audio Engineering Society. And one of the 
interesting reasons why I quite like submitting there is the inspirational aspect. The fact that some of the most important, most highly influential papers in audio research first appeared in JAES. And so I'll spend the next few minutes highlighting some of the great papers, publications that have appeared there. And the first one I'd like to mention is the first English language uh, paper about the Haas effect by Haas himself in 1972. It has 426 citations. And what I really like about this is that this is somewhat quite theoretical psychoacoustics work, but is now pervasive in audio production and any blog, any educator talking about audio production tools and how to mix for stereo and spatial effects will mention the Haas effect. Another great paper is by Henrik Moller on HRTFs and it presented the first database of HRTFs, now very widely used and had an immediate follow-up paper on how to use those HRTFs for rendering of binaural audio. So the whole field of binaural sound really originates, at least largely in part, from publications in JAES. MP3 and its follow-up AAC first appeared in uh, the journal as well, led by Karl Heinz Brandenburg and Gerhard Stoll with 644 uh, citations. And in the 90s, that completely revolutionized the world of audio. Uh, John Chowning, who I had the privilege of seeing him give a talk not long ago, he published his work on uh, FM synthesis or frequency modulation sound synthesis in the journal in 1973. It has almost a thousand citations now, and it's a core building block now for a lot of sound synthesis techniques and used in a lot of creative music production. And of course, Michael Gerzen's seminal paper that laid out the foundations for ambisonics appeared in 1973, also with almost a thousand citations now. Michael mentioned that actually the first mention of the ideas of ambisonics appeared before this one in another paper. But Michael's paper is the one that kicked off the whole field and was followed uh, with, by work by Mark Paletti, laying out all the formal mathematical spherical harmonics basis for ambisonics. Glassberg and Moore's loudness model appeared in the journal, and so it's the main model used today to estimate how people perceive the loudness of a signal, and it's not the ITU loudness, it's the one that is dependent on uh, loudness levels and a deep understanding of the hearing system. Uh, with just over a thousand and one hundred citations. But probably the most highly cited paper in the journal is Villa Polker's 1997 paper. A lot happened in 1997, apparently, um, on vector based amplitude panel panning. And it was Villa Polky's first major paper now has over 1,500 citations, according to Google Scholar. So there are other highly cited papers, other extremely influential papers, but they all started with the journal. And that to me is a big reason why that's a target for publishing research. These papers really do make a difference throughout the whole field. Why else to publish? One thing to note is that it gets an audience that a lot of other journals just don't get. So many journals, including ones with high impact factor, are cited by academics and the work ends up read by other academics and it's within this circle. But it can be a little bit of an echo chamber. The journal, because of the nature of the AES, is so sometimes read by practitioners and enthusiasts and a lot by industry. I know someone who actually it's their, their weekend afternoon reading out in the back garden. I don't expect there are many people like that, but there are people who read the journal just because of a passion for audio. Another thing to realize uh, that not everyone does realize is that 
JAS actually has a very wide remit. There's people out there who think, well, it's only microphones and loudspeakers and mixing consoles. And if I'm not doing that, AES may not be for me. But of course, there's a lot of machine learning, deep learning, machine listening research going on, a lot of audio for games, audio for uh, automotive. There are aspects of um, speech research, of acoustics research, psychoacoustics especially, that are all highly relevant and do get published in the journal. And one nice thing is that the AES promotes publications in the journal very widely. So the newsletter gets distributed to everyone in AES. They have a round table where for each issue of the journal, there is a um, online sort of workshop where all of the authors discuss their work and answers questions about their work and discuss it with each other. It's really interesting and available to all AES members and potentially to others. And um, journal publications do get publicized quite heavily on the website and in other forums. And lastly, I'll mention a few tips and tricks for authors. So th this isn't formal rules about publishing, but these are things that people should be aware of and perhaps don't always follow. So the first thing to note is that writing a paper isn't as hard as it sounds. You can be doing great research or you can be doing research and you hope it's great, but you don't know. But the idea of publishing in a serious journal about it can be very daunting and it doesn't need to be. Very often you can build a paper, a good paper, around one strong result. All you need is one thing in there that is of interest to others and advances the state of the art, and that could be sufficient for a paper. Once you write the abstract, the introduction, you state what the problem is, uh, you discuss other work, uh, how far the other work has gotten, the method that you took in getting that re result, the presentation of the result itself and discussion and conclusion around it, that's the paper. And you don't need a huge amount of work beyond that one result. So that's something to keep in mind. Another thing is a lot of researchers don't promote their publications anywhere near as much as they could. And you can do great work, but if people don't notice it, it doesn't get cited and doesn't influence the field. So you want to make sure it gets noticed. Do cite other papers in your paper. Those are the most likely people to read your work, to be interested in your work, and you should tell the people that you cite about your work. So I never did this in the past, but then I got emails on a couple of papers from people saying, just thought you'd like to know I cited your work in my recent publication. And I thought that was great, and it encouraged me to read their work and potentially cite their work as, as well. And if you are publishing something that has a story about it, that people might like to write about themselves, or is very influential, go ahead and with your organization, see if you can issue a press release about the paper. It's a wonderful thing when you get a very wide number of people interested in a research result. And so it is worth doing if you think it's the type of thing uh, a wide community could be interested in. And promote the work on social media. I know people with an active Twitter feed, but they never tweet when they have a new publication. So go ahead and do that. And of course, open access publishing, which the journal does offer, has um, is another way to help ensure that a very wide number of people read and potentially cite your work. And the last thing I'd like to mention is Reviewing and publishing can be challenging and it can be frustrating. Papers get rejected for all sorts of reasons, some of them not always rational reasons. Don't be discouraged about negative reviews or about rejections. It's all part of the process. Hopefully, those reviews make your own work better and it can be a bit random. Sometimes you can do wonderful work, one journal, one reviewer hates it, everyone else loves it. You don't know and you shouldn't uh, treat it as uh, a statement about yourself. Sometimes it's not even a statement about the research. So try and try again. And on that note, thank you all very much and I will pass it on. So thank you. Hello. 
I am Vesa Välimäki, the Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of the Audio Engineering Society. First, I would like to tell you a few words about acceptable topics for the journal. So, the Audio Engineering Society journal basically publishes technical papers related directly to audio engineering. Uh, so, things like spatial audio, audio processing headphones, loudspeakers are, are typical uh, for us. Um, there are also some topics in the intersection of acoustics and audio, which are all, all just fine for us, like psychoacoustics and room acoustics when they are related to music listening or perception of music. Um, we also like musical instruments, because musical instruments are uh, one of the main sound sources in sound recordings. And there are also topics in acoustics that are not so much related to audio engineering, uh, such as noise control, especially when it comes to uh, suppression of industrial noise or, or uh, attenuation of noise in environments that are not used for music at all. Then when we look at speech technology, uh, microphone arrays are a good audio topic, even if they are used for speech. Um, also speech uh, signal processing topics such as uh, speech enhancement and audio, audio forensics are, are fine. Uh, but when um, we go closer to language, then those topics are uh, further away from audio. For example, speech synthesis is a little bit a hard topic for us, and speech recognition and voice pathologies uh, are not audio engineering, we have decided. In sonic arts, uh, we like audio plugins and digital audio effects, for example, and also sound design, uh, but more artistic topics such as music composition and other creative uses of sound are not audio engineering. So, of course, these are just some examples, but I hope this shows you that audio engineering is a, is a wide field and, and there are quite many topics that we, we accept for the journal. Next, I would like to say something about our immediate rejection policy. So, when we receive a new submission to the journal, uh, either the editor-in-chief, which is me, or an associate technical editor will check the uh, manuscript. So we will very, very closely look at the following five aspects. Uh, first of all, is the topic of the paper related to audio engineering or not? Uh, if there are no references to Journal of the AES uh, papers, for example, uh, we suspect that it might not be related. At least we have to be careful about that. Uh, we also check the language, if the use of the English language is not good and it's, uh, let's say, hard to read for that reason, then we might reject the paper just for this reason. We also look at similarity. For example, uh, AES convention papers cannot be published in the same form uh, in the journal, but we would require uh, them to be revised and uh, extend, extended. However, we like to publish uh, papers that are based on former uh, conference or convention papers, but they must be sufficiently different and they have to cite the original uh, conference paper also. Uh, one of the big issues in uh, scientific research is the validation. And uh, so we check whether that's done properly in, in all submissions. For example, if you submit a paper related to a new method, but there have been other previous methods to do the same, so, or to solve the same problem, then uh, the, the paper should compare the new method with, with these previous solutions and show some advantages. Uh, it's very common that audio engineering papers uh, require some sort of comparison or, or some experiments to show their results. And um, if that's missing, then that can be a reason for rejection. Finally, uh, Novelty, of course, is required from all uh, scientific research. And uh, if nothing new is claimed in the manuscript, then of course we think that is, there is nothing new. Uh, also, if we see that, or we know that there are previous publications related to the same topic that have not been cited in the paper, uh, then we can also uh, suspect that maybe it is not new and uh, based on missing references, we can also reject the paper. And so if a if, if paper uh, fails in even one of these uh, points, then 
we will immediately reject it and we would like to uh, we, we try to do it very quickly so that authors can uh, get feedback soon and, and then can can continue their work and maybe maybe then uh, submit the paper again later. Next, uh, I would explain the peer review process of the journal. Uh, so most papers, of course, pass the basic check. And so I, as the editor in chief, will then next select an uh, associate technical editor who will handle the review process for that submission. Um, the editor will uh, invite three, four, maybe five reviewers who are experts in that paper's topic. And um, of course, then we hope that those uh, reviewers will send their reports back uh, soon. And our aim is to make the first decision about the paper within a month from the submission. It doesn't always go so well, but uh, we try to improve our processes so that we could often uh, achieve this. Then finally, uh, the editor will make a decision about the submission based on the review reports. And we have four uh, categories for decisions nowadays, accept, uh, major revision, minor revision, and reject. Uh, so if reviewers have uh, not much uh, uh, to say about the paper, they actually quite, quite like it and don't require changes, then we can accept it as is. But it's very common that when you ask reviewers to or experts to, to say something about a submission, they, they have something to say and sometimes quite, quite much actually, any ideas how to improve it. And um, if there's really many, many things and large, large issues, then the suggestion is, is a major revision that may require a lot of new works, maybe new experiments and, and can also change the results of the paper actually. A minor revision uh, corresponds to a smaller uh, change, usually just editing. So you might have to improve some parts of text and uh, some figures, maybe maybe at references or something like that. Sometimes this can be done in a few hours. But anyway, after the revision, the paper will be sent back to us and uh, the reviewers will check it again. And then hopefully after that, the paper can be accepted. But we also have this reject category. So those papers that just aren't, aren't good enough or could not be uh, improved sufficiently in in a, in a short sufficiently short time then they will be rejected but of course uh, the authors get feedback also in that case so they can improve their work and maybe later uh, send the, uh, a new version of the paper to us or maybe to another journal or conference finally i would like to talk about open access publishing in the aes journal so Open access papers published in our journal are available to everybody to read and uh, not only to AS members. And um, this is of course a great thing. And uh, the authors can themselves decide whether they want their paper to be open access or not. A fee must be paid and you would have to check the uh, current guidelines to see how much that is. Uh, many authors decide that this is a good thing. So now about one third of our papers are OA. And why would people so uh, be willing to, so many people would be willing to pay? It's because, as I said, those papers will be freely available for everybody on this planet. And many, many people will actually see them and read them. And those open access papers will also get cited more than subscription-based papers. I would also like to advertise our current campaign. Uh, all review articles, uh, uh, accepted for publication in the AS Journal are now published as OA papers for free. And, and this campaign is running now, and I think we will also continue it next year. And that's all I wanted to say. So thanks very much for listening. Uh, the next speaker is Bozena Kostek. From this point on, I would like to present several points related to special issue. So how to propose a special issue? First of all, uh, you should look into the journal guidelines on this subject. And then you can see that uh, special issues are welcome by the journal. Of course, those interested in uh, 
submitting a proposal for special issue should contact the editor in chief, Beza Valimaki. One of the important points is that you should advertise special issue, uh, not only within the uh, journal, but also elsewhere, at least six months before the deadline of manuscript submission. And some points on how to become guest editor and uh, their uh, and their role. So, according to the journal guidelines, guest editors will act as associate technical editors for manuscripts. So, their role is to identify reviewers and then take a decision. And what does it mean in practice? You need one or three, one to three guest editors for the special issue. They shouldn't be from the same organization. There should be some diversity and uh, they should represent different subtopics of the special issue team. They must be sufficiently senior for the editorial role and they have, they should have published several scientific journal papers and at least one in the AES journal. Of course, they should be approved by the uh, editor-in-chief. How to choose a theme for a special issue? Once again, we can look into the journal guidelines. So you can see that any notable topic in the scope of audio engineering may be appropriate for a special issue. However, please remember that it's important to see how this specific topic will attract a potential audience because the special issue is expected to fill in a full journal issue. So you should estimate the minimum number of submissions expected. So to summarize how to choose a theme for special issue, it should be a hot topic, but related to audio. And the, the most important point is that several papers should be gathered because you will not have enough work to perform. But seriously, if there are only a few papers if accepted, they will be pub published in regular journal issue. And another important point is that uh, these papers uh, related to special issue may be formed on the basis of a conference related to audio, both within AES and elsewhere. Outside may be even better because then you will reach more people with different backgrounds. It can be an interdisciplinary topic. And of course, once again, this topic, this theme of the special issue should be, uh, should be approved by the journal editor in chief. And maybe it's good to see uh, recently published special issues. You can see uh, both uh, topics and guest editors that were re responsible for publishing them. So you can see that there were quite diverse themes around uh, these special issues. And another point is forthcoming special issues. So there are several current call for papers and Maybe if you are not interested in becoming a guest editor, you should still think about submitting a paper for, for such. So just a reminder, once again, guidelines for a potential special issue. And thank you for your attention. Thanks very much uh, to our presenters, to Josh, to Visa, and to Bozina for that tutorial information. Uh, thank you all for your attention uh, regarding this tutorial. We hope you've found it useful and uh, 
uh, in a way encouraging you to participate in uh, publication with the Journal of the Audio Engineering Society. It will be um, a uh, possibility that you might have some questions. Uh, if so, we do invite you to contact any one of the presenters today. Uh, you can also contact one of the uh, journal associate technical editors. Uh, there's a, a list of the individuals who are in charge of different areas of the audio field and uh, have special expertise. And so if you have a question about a paper topic or want to get some guidance about the submission process for the journal, that would be a good place to start. So in conclusion, uh, we do invite you to share your work. Uh, if you have some information you'd like to present, uh, a local AES section meeting is often a good place to start and, and get a little feedback from your local group. Uh, papers at the AES conventions and conferences are also a great way to proceed. And then, of course, uh, the Journal of the Audio Engineering Society is our archival uh, way of presenting audio uh, for the benefit of the society. Thanks very much.